What's the word, y'all? Ladies and gentlemen, it is 1.30 in the morning Central Time, and James Harden was traded to the Clippers. For what? I don't know. This is the first time in NBA trade history, as far as like the social media era, where a trade was announced, but the details wasn't announced right after. It's been 24 minutes since Woj has announced the trade is happening. We just twitted a lot of thumbs. Twitter's going crazy, just trying to figure out what exactly this package looks like. What makes it interesting is that Woj reported it. We haven't got the Shams report. Now, again, it is 1.30 Central Time, so maybe Shams is asleep and he missed the beat because he decided to catch some Z's. But regardless, it's rare that we see a, a trade of this magnitude reported one way and not the other. And the fact that it is taking 24 minutes is just interesting. Does that mean there's a third team involved? I don't really know, but I was in bed with my wife ready to go to sleep. I was dozing off, and then my phone went doo doo. Ah, uh, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Then doo 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 doo. I got four different notifications. I'm like, that ain't normal. So I look at the phone, and, and boom, there it is. You can speculate exactly what the trade might look like. Is it Marcus Morris, who hasn't really played? He didn't play at least yesterday. Um, is it Terrence Mann? Is Terrence Mann as untouchable as he was perceived to be two weeks ago? Even without us knowing exactly what the trade looked like, we can kind of talk about the timetable, why it ended up happening right here, right now. Why, was it, what, why wasn't it two weeks ago? Why is it not, you know, December 15th? where a majority of players are eligible for trades. The 76ers ran into this wall that the NBA incorporated this season. And because James Harden was an all-star slash all-NBA player not too long ago, he falls under the, the new anti-rest rule, the anti-low management rule. And so far through the first couple games of the season, we have not seen James Harden. Uh, the first game, he just completely didn't report. And then game number two, he tried to get on the team playing. They, Elton Brand and Daryl Morey and all the security told him no. And in game number three, he showed up. He was even on the bench joking with P.J. Tucker and everything. But because of these new rules, they don't have a lot of wiggle room to tell James he can sit at the crib until December. And it is no secret that Tyrese Max has been hooping. He's been hooping so well, he was the Eastern Conference Player of the Week in the Western Conference was Nikola Jokic, a two-time MVP. Maxi has been on one, so like we mentioned on the Kenny Beach and Podcast, link is in the description, the fact that Maxi looks as good as he does means that the James Harden thing is not as pressing as you might think. Dale Morey has continuously said that he will not trade James Harden away for anything less than a star player, anything of, uh, he won't trade it for anything less valuable. So as, as we wait... I mean, we're gonna see exactly how true that is, I guess. But he might have had to he might have had to settle because of the new rules. And because settling doesn't feel that bad because Joel Embiid is still playing in the MVP level, Tyrese Maxey has looked really good. Tobias Harris has got the freedom to take the shots that he wants to shot shoot shoot under Nick Nurse. So maybe just these added role players is what he gets. But again, it's now been 30 minutes. And we still don't know. And I will not sleep. I will not rest. Until we do know. So I'm going to pause. And the next time you hear from me, we'll know the details. After 38 minutes, we finally got the details. It is Marcus Morris, Nicholas Batum, Robert Covington, Kenyon Martin Jr., and multiple draft picks in a pick swap. And, and they also get P.J. Tucker in return. Wow. What a, what a return for the Clippers. So far on the season, Marcus Morris has not played. Nicholas Batum, Robert Covington, and KJ Martin all have played but not been very effective. Again, just small sample size of a couple games in the season. And they give up that and then multiple picks. What does that mean at this moment? We don't really know. Maybe by the time this video is out, you got a full grasp of, of exactly um, what that means. But James Harden is, is a Clipper along, again, with, with P.J. Tucker. Which, P.J. Tucker being thrown into it kind of makes sense considering the, the relationship between James and P.J. has been like this for a decade. And when James did come back to the team, the one guy he was joking with on the bench was P.J. So P.J. might have been like, hey, I want to be a part of this as well. So now it is P.G., it is Kawhi, it is, and it is James as a new big three in the association. And it just sounds so good. But I, I am a bit, I've, I've, I've expressed this in the past when we thought that the James Harden Clippers thing was going to happen months ago, that I am all for it as long as we can somehow convince James Harden to finally buy into a system that is not ISO heavy with him with the ball. Because through the first couple games of the season, the Clippers look 
amazing. The ball is zipping. They're running the floor. They're hitting their shots. Paul George looks like an all-NBA player. Kawhi Leonard looks like an all-NBA player. Russell Westbrook looks really good. Now he's probably relegated to come back off the bench, but I guess maybe not. And James has just been a player that his play style follows him no matter where he goes. It just always has been the case. And I don't know if this is finally the time that it won't. We're talking about a player that's been on four different teams since 2021, if I'm not mistaken. That is a lot of, of different teams, and every single one of the patterns has been exactly the same, where the team has kind of changed their identity to match James. And listen, James's identity, the way he plays ball, has equaled regular season wins his entire career post OKC, of course, when they gave him the keys in Houston. His entire, entire career, but we saw there was a ceiling on that. So if we can somehow convince James to buy into the fact that he's number three, oh, it's over with. Because you don't have to worry about the wing defense anymore because you got Kawhi and Paul George as long as they're healthy. You don't really have to worry about the paint defense because Zubac, at least this season, has been really, really good there. And they, again, got him, PJ. They got PJ Tucker in this as a throw-in. And though P.J. Tucker is not as effective as he was in the 2021 NBA Finals run, he still does all the dirty work. He's still good enough to play that small ball five. And they have a potential really cool lineup if you can get that with... Again, I don't know how I feel about Russ and James Harden sharing the court a lot. But let's, let's just go out and say that those two on the court with Kawhi, with P.G., and then, then P.J. Tucker at the five, like that team has a lot of different ways it can play. And well, Steve Ballmer and company said that we're not giving away Terrence Mann, and they live by that. For the 76ers, this, of course, is just completely them washing their hands of the situation of the James Harden thing. Um, and apparently they get back multiple first round picks or what did he even say first round it just says picks right multiple draft picks and a pick swap is what we know the depth over there with the Clippers is pretty good too I like it I, again I don't know if James and Russ are going to start together um, I'm just going to assume that Terrence Mann is going to be the fifth starter and they will put Russ back on the bench in that role that he played last season. So the bench could look like Russell Westbrook, Norman Powell, I don't know, maybe like Amir Coffey or Brandon Boston or something, um, or Bones High. I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know what the bench looks like. Uh, there's a lot to be done um, or a lot of decisions to make if you're Tyron Lou and they got a full season to get it going. Like, yes, you would rather this trade have happened in the offseason if you're the Clippers. But, hey, three games, not that big of a deal. More details. The Clippers are sending the 76ers a 2028 unprotected first-round pick, two second-round picks, and a pick swap. The Clippers are also routing the 76ers an additional future first round pick from a third team uh i don't know exactly what that means but a 2028 is a valuable pick considering um right now james obviously is under contract to the end of the season pj and Kawhi both have not signed the extensions just yet i'm assuming that they probably will but even that extension is not going to cover 2028 and both of them being in their mid mid 20s that first round pick in 2028 could be a valuable asset but again we are talking about a pick for so long in the future that is it's cool to say right now, but we got to figure out what it looks like in actuality because there has been times throughout NBA history where we say something like this. Oh, man, that pick is going to be valuable four years down the line. And then four years down the line happens and it's not as valuable as you and I think. So we'll see. Now, I wonder what the timetable is for something like this. If we're getting this trade done October 31st, happy happy Halloween for everybody out there. Um, we're getting this trade done October 31st. By the deadline, could these players be moved again? And the only reason I ask that is because the 76ers are still trying to be in contention. And if there's another team out there that sees that 2028 first round pick and a star is on the market or somebody of that caliber, maybe a little below the star, but they're like, man, we'll, we'll give you uh, this player in exchange for 2028 plus Robert Covington, Nicholas Batum, whatever, whatever. Could the 76ers somehow flip this package that they got for something else at the deadline? Again, I don't know if the timetable makes sense, but maybe. This last piece about them routing another first round pick from a third team is interesting because I just, I genuinely do not know what that means at this moment. Does that mean that they're trading away somebody else on their roster to acquire an additional first round pick to give to the Clippers or to give to the 76ers? I mean, we're too deep into it. The, the way this is probably going to go, we're probably going to end this right here with the initial reactions, and then we'll talk about it again on the Kenny Beachin podcast on Thursday when I record, because by that time, we will 
have all the details. What What is that mystery third team or, or whatever? James Harden is a clipper. Them, them boys got him together again. Russell Westbrook, James Harden, they got it, they got it again. This is this could be crazy, man. If you watch some of my videos or my podcasts, you would know that this year for the Clippers, it was the least exciting year for me, for, for them. Because this is year number five, and every single year I was on the hype train. Two of the last four years, I picked them to win the Western Conference, and obviously they haven't got that far. They've got to the Western Conference Finals, and Kawhi Leonard was he towards ACL or whatever. So I was like, okay, this is the year I won't be on the hype train. I think they could do it, but I'm just done psyching myself out on it. And now they just added James Harden, who I do want to remind people was really, really good last season, especially in the regular season. So um, lighter load for James Harden, hopefully, and that would potentially lead to him having better performances come playoff time or whatever. But I'm very curious if it's going to be a lot of isolation for James or will he learn to not change the system upon arrival. Let me know what you think about the trade. Um, filming the episode of the podcast soon. So we'll have more details and we'll have more opinions.